It's time now for your weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news from the South region. This is Fox Sports Outdoor South. One of my best and earliest childhood memories happened when I was about seven or eight, maybe as much as nine years old. We were at my grandparents' farm just outside the town of Whitney, Texas, getting ready to go to bed one night when my uncle and my dad said, let's go fishing. My brother and I are like, let's go fishing. It's, it's, it's almost bedtime, but we did. We loaded the aluminum V-bottom boat up, took a Coleman lantern out at night, sat right out there and caught 65 white bass. And to this day, I remember it like it was just a few nights ago. In fact, it's one of the reasons that I'm so hooked on fishing even today. That little episode happened on the lake just behind me. Welcome everybody to Lake Whitney, Texas. It's a fantastic lake on the Brazos River system in central Texas, not too far north of Waco, Texas. We're gonna go out there and take the Nitro Z8 at night, set out some lights, and I'll show you a unique little twist on the light situation and see if we can catch a few fish and a little bonus We'll beat this 100 degree daytime heat as well. While we're out doing that, we're gonna be taking you around the region for your latest local fishing reports from lakes, rivers, and bays in your neck of the woods from our expert team of insider reporters. It's gonna be a lot of fun. You know, it's hard for me to believe that that little episode as a kid happened now nearly 50 years ago. My, how time flies. But those kinds of memories do last a lifetime. Right now, let's get this party started back at the FSN studios. Here's your weekend planner. The Salooner Tables are forecasting a nice opportunity for you weekend anglers. Saturday's game fish activity is listed as good with the best time starting at 926 in the morning. And Sunday is listed as excellent with peak times beginning at 1007 a.m. Expect sunrise to take place at 656 with sunset happening at 803. And we'll have a new moon on Monday, so evenings this weekend will have very little moonlight. We'll be right back with all of the current fishing reports from around the area. And I'll return with professional angler Kevin Van Dam with some advice on plastic worm fishing. Back in a bit. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Costa Sunglasses. See what's out there. By Lou's, setting a new standard in fishing performance. Feel the difference. By Strike King Lures, number one in fishing. And by Lawrence Electronics. Find, navigate, dominate. Got one. There we go. Never know what you've got. Welcome back, everybody. Whoa, good pull. White bass. All right, Fox Sports Outdoors coming to you on a night fishing expedition. And we've made it out. It's early in the night. And uh, I've come out and I'm fishing under some lights. That's just an average size white bass for you. Nothing huge, but a good way to get it going. That one bit. Little Bobby Garland. Soft plastic bait. I'm going to keep some fish. Don't you do that. I'm going to keep some fish, so I'm going to put him down right there for the moment. I want to explain to you what we're doing here. I found something at Academy. I found some cool little submersible lights. They're 12 volt lights. You, they have alligator clips and you clip them on your battery. And the cool thing about them is they're fully waterproof and you just drop them down in the water like that. And you can see how much light the thing gives off. And you want to stay stationary and you're going to attract the bait fish. Cool thing about fishing out here at night, especially with that little garland bait, is that you never know what you're going to catch. It's almost like saltwater fishing out here. But it's a lot of fun. It's a great way to take a kid fishing, and above all, it's a great way to get out of the heat. It was uh, 102 today where I live, and out here tonight, it's about 80 degrees with a little breeze blowing, not even breaking a sweat. Fantastic way to fish. Drop you some submersible lights in. I'll give you a couple of more little keys about that coming up in just a minute. Hey, let's get some fishing reports started for tonight. Let's go to the Carolinas, north and south, fresh and salt water with Captain E. Inglis Glover. Hey folks, Captain E here with your Carolinas report. This week brought to you by Marshalls Marine. Located in Lake City in Georgetown, South Carolina, for all your nitro and bass tracker needs and for your family friendly fun since 1969, visit www.marshallsmarine.com. 
And right now on the saltwater side of things, remember the tournaments we talked about last week. They're coming up this weekend on the 23rd. You've got the Low Country Tarpon Tournament between Georgetown and Charleston. And we've got the 7C Spanish Mackerel Derby there in Murrow's Inlet. And let's concentrate on the saltwater side of things today. There's one thing that I really think you guys need to get out and do, and that is to concentrate on those deeper flounder. The flounder right now have moved out of the estuaries. We've got some fish back in there still, but they're out on those deeper live bottom areas, the deeper reefs, uh, concentrated in 40 to 60 foot of water. Get out with some heavier jigs, fish with some artificials, fish with some big live bait. You're gonna catch some of the biggest flounder of the season, and also, you're going to get in on some black sea bass and some other things as well while you're out there. Anchor up right on top of these areas and just concentrate right on those ledges and right on those live bottoms and those reefs where these fish are going to be loaded up. In the freshwater side of things, the brim continue to bite really good. Load up on your crickets and head to some deeper holes located in the bends of your rivers. You're going to get some of the best brim action of the year and be sure to take a kid with you. This has been your Carolina's Report, sponsored by Marshalls Marine. Remember, fish smarter, not harder, and keep your chaos organized. Got him. Ooh, that's a good pull. Big white bass. Big one right there. Look at that big dude. Wow. That's a that's a big white bass. That's a pound and three quarters. Something like that. That's about a 16 inch white. Something in that range. Welcome back everybody. Fox Sports Outdoors. Out here night fishing, reliving one of my best childhood memories. We caught a whole bunch of those one night and it hooked me on fishing for a lifetime. Let me tell you something. All it takes is one of those little experiences to hook your kid on fishing for a lifetime. Let me give you a couple of other quick pointers. If you're gonna come out here night fishing, there are some safety things that, that I really need to talk about. Number one, always need to keep your PFD, personal flotation device, handy and use it every time the big motor is cranked. Very dangerous out here at night. Make sure your cell phone is charged. Make sure you got a full battery. Hopefully you can get a signal out on the lake. Number three, never go alone. Always have somebody in the boat with you and make sure somebody knows where you're going and what time you'll be home. Come out here before it gets dark and mark your path. Leave a trail and that way you can follow that trail. In fact, I'm going to show you on my Lawrence HDS back here and I can know that I'll be safe and I won't hit a stump or a rock or anything like that as long as I stay on that safe trail that I made before it got dark. All right, these lights are really working well. Again, I've got them hung down now about five feet, but these things can go down as deep as about 10 feet, or you can put them up real shallow. You've got to experiment. One other quick thing, depth is critical at night. You've got to have the right depth. You need to experiment. Sometimes they can be down there 20 feet deep. Sometimes they can be just right under the surface. Wherever you catch one, chances are you're going to catch a bunch. So pay attention to how many pulls off your reel you're fishing vertically right underneath those lights. Let's get you some more fishing and lake reports. Let's go to Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia with your saltwater report and Bob McNally, followed by Jimmy Jacobs and your freshwater report. This part of the program is brought to you by the state of Mississippi, where the fishing fun is year round, the offshore fishing is world class, and the inshore fishing is great too. So plan your next fishing trip to Mississippi, the true south. Fishing throughout the southeast coastal region has been really great. The weather's hot, but the fishing is great too. A lot of the tropical species really get fired up in this hot weather. Over in Mississippi, the elephant tuna, tuna weighing 50 to 100 pounds, lots of big fish, are schooling and they're really doing well around some of the far offshore oil rigs in deep water. Uh, south of the 265 rig has been really good for anglers chunking and live bait fishing. Some of that fishing goes on best at night and you got to be rigged right for it, but these are huge tuna and they are a riot to catch. Also in Mississippi, they're catching uh, trout now around Cat Island. Again, that's early and late fishing. Bull redfish are being caught around a Katrina reef there in Mississippi. In Alabama, I was talking to Captain Kevin Olmstead, who works on uh, Mobile Bay, and he's been having really good sea trout fishing very early in the morning using live shrimp deep. Uh, these fish are going two to five pounds, and he's also catching some nice redfish. Some of those bull reds are moving into Mobile Bay, and the lower bay has been especially good for them around the Fort Morgan area. 
Uh, this is live bait fishing. Sometimes you can catch them on jigs and spoons. Lots of big fish and that fishing is only going to get better over the next month or two. Uh, also in uh, Georgia, Captain Tim Cunning continues to catch big flounder, one to four pound fish, mainly on falling tides, fish in the mouths of uh, creek runouts that are coming in the intercoastal waterway or some of the rivers in the, uh, that area. He's also doing pretty well on trout. Uh, you have to find clear water near the inlets or better. Uh, redfish are in the surf and the bull reds are beginning to move into that area very well, especially at the St. Mary's Inlet around the rock jetties. Some of those big reds are going 30 to 40 pounds. Again, that fishing will get better, peaking probably in late September or October. Well, that's it for the coastal southeast. Get out on the water when you can and please take a youngster with you when you go. Thanks for joining us for the Alabama, Georgia and Mississippi Freshwater Angling Report. This week's report is brought to you by scenic coastal Georgia's Liberty County, the perfect spot for hunting and fishing and outdoor recreation. Two hunting preserves, two marinas, and public fishing piers offer great hunting and fishing trips or outdoor adventures. Escape the ordinary in Liberty County, the right blend, www.libertycounty.org. As we continue to endure this long, hot summer, in the deep south, anglers are turning to two patterns to catch fish regardless of the species. They're fishing at night or they're fishing deep or they're combining the two. On Alabama's Holt Lake, blue catfish are biting right now. This 3,300-acre navigation and flood control reservoir on the Black Warrior River is just north of Tuscaloosa. Now, it's more noted for spring bass action, yet it gave up the Alabama state record blue catfish back in 2012. That fish weighed 120 pounds, 4 ounces. Now, you're not going to catch any monsters in August, but there are a lot of 3-pound blue cats in this lake. You want to be fishing in the tail race at the upper end of the lake? In Georgia, head over to Alatoona Lake for spotted bass action after sunset. This reservoir is on the Etowah River and it holds those larger Alabama spotted bass. Target the 40 man-made fish attractors that are in deep water. So you want to try drop shots, fish with a 4-inch finesse worm or a fluke. You can also try jigging spoons fished vertically at night. Now the largemouth bass are biting on northeast Mississippi's 4,121-acre Aberdeen Lake on the Tin Tom Waterway. These fish are holding deep on structure along the old river channel. Things to be throwing are square-billed crankbaits, Texas rig plastic worms. But you have to know how to fish these in deep water and get them right down there along the river ledges to be successful. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Exide AGM Marine Batteries. Starts like new, stays like new longer. By Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland Lures. With our baits, a good day of fishing is in the bag. By Motor Guide, trolling motors engineered for anglers. And by Nitro Performance Fishing Boats. Welcome to the big leagues. Hey, welcome back everybody. There's a huge school of little bait fish flipping all around, just clouds of them around these lights. We're night fishing on Lake Whitney, but you can do this anywhere this summer. Anywhere that's got white bass or crappie, you can do this night fishing. But if you get that school of little bait fish attracted in like that, and actually if you can see them on your graph, fish will be right behind and there's something right there. I got one. Oh, it's a white, good white. Come here, got him. I want to show you a little secret to this night fishing. We're keeping white bass. They make really tasty eating. A lot of people don't like white bass, but they are really good. When you fillet it, cut that little dark strip out of the side. That's that little iodine strip. That has kind of a fishy flavor to it. If you'll cut that out, white meat is left and they're great eating. I'm gonna lay right there for a second. Let me show you the little tip. Here's my tip, I haven't done this in many years. It's a minnow bucket. I stopped by and got five dozen shiners, minnows, crappie minnows. That one's kind of torn up, but what I'm doing is taking my Bobby Garland crappie jig and I'm coming from the bottom up, hooking them under the bottom jaw and then through the top. That is a rig that will absolutely kill them. You can, you can use the little Bobby Garland crappie jig, the little uh, soft plastic, that's a baby shad. But when you get that little live minnow tipped on the back of it and he's flipping like that and he's putting off scent and scales in the water, oh man, 
But once again, you've got to stay still. When you're doing this, you want to anchor up or tie to a tree, get somewhere where you can stop, get yourself perfectly still, and allow some time for all those bait fish to be attracted to that light. Once they do that, you're going to be in business. It's a lot of fun. All right, let's get you some more fishing and lake reports. Hey guys, welcome to this week's Tennessee and Kentucky Fishing Report. You know, we're late into summer and the fishing is obviously evident of that. It's not terrible, but it's not as good as it has been. Uh, some big bags being caught from time to time on lakes that have uh, emergent vegetation, hydrilla, milfoil, even lily pads. Uh, real foot lake, I actually have heard some really good stories coming from real foot. Guys just fishing lily pads and, and grassy areas where there's a lot of uh, oxygen in the water. This time of year on big bodies of water like this, just get out and use your electronics find the thermoclines. The bass aren't going to be in as big a schools as they've been in in earlier summer. They're going to be smaller schools, but you're going to catch some big bites. Just fish shallow water adjacent to deep water and vegetation is always a plus. With that being said, the night fishing bite throughout the region is still pretty solid. It's not great, but it's not bad. Uh, Percy Priest, Old Hickory, the nighttime tournaments are still taking you know, pretty decent weights to win. Um, as far as the other species go, catfishing has been pretty good on the Cumberland River. I've heard some reports of uh, couple big bags of catfish being caught, guys using cut bait on the river channel on days and they're pulling current. Aside from that, the stripe, not striper, stripe bass, um, the little guys, the little white bass, sand bass, whatever you call them, there's a thousand names for them, that they, they all equal the name fun. Go out early, go late, look for birds, look for uh, surface activity, find a calm day like this right here and they're not hard to find. Take a kid and throw anything you want in there and get bit. Guys, let's stick it out through summer. Cooler weather's on the way and hotter fishing's on the way. We can't wait to see you in Tennessee and Kentucky. God bless. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. By Mercury Marine, celebrating 75 years of marine excellence. By Strand Fishing Lines, the standard of dependability and by Tracker Boats. It's more than just a boat, it's a tracker. Welcome back everyone, it's time for the Ask the Pro segment. This week's question was submitted by Sharon who emailed, I'm new to fishing and want to learn to use plastics. Which rig should I start with? We went to Bassmaster's all-time money winner Kevin Van Dam for some help. You know, if you're just starting out and you're in the back of the boat, throwing plastics is a great way to catch fish. You know, the, a lot of times the person in the front is going to be using a faster moving uh, power bait and catching the aggressive fish. So using something like that, you know, a finesse worm or a, a small jig, or small Carolina rig is a great way to catch fish. If you're not used to feeling the bite with plastics, one of the advantages is you can use braided line. Braided line is the best thing there is for a beginner because it's so sensitive, it really helps you learn the feel of the difference between grass, the rocks, and the wood down there on the bottom, and that subtle bite of a bass. So try some braid, it'll really help you with those plastics. Thank you, Kevin. If you have a question for one of the anglers, visit our website, follow the Ask the Pro link on the right side of the page, and let us know. Now let's see which viewer wins the Costa Catch of the Week. Well, as you can see, dawn is breaking over my left shoulder and we have fished the entire night away from sunset till almost sunrise. And we've actually wound up with a pretty good mess of white bass here. As you can see, nothing really to brag about, but some, some nice quality fish, all different sizes in here. We obviously didn't have time to show catching all of those on the show, but we wound up with a pretty good sack of fillets for a good night's fishing. Hey, it's time right now for this week's Coast to Catch of the Week. Someone wins a free pair of sunglasses, and he is Brett Hartramp of Mobile, Alabama, showing off a 74-pound Wahoo he caught 15 miles out into the Gulf of Mexico, south of Orange Beach, Alabama. If you would like to enter the contest and have a great chance to win a pair of Coast to sunglasses of your very own, all you have to do is go to our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com, on the right-hand side of the front page is the Costa Catch of the Week box. Send us your big fish photo and you could be our next winner. And if you'd like to see all of the Costa frame and lens styles, go back to the front page of our website, click on the Costa logo, and you can see all of the frames, all of the lenses there, including all of the ones that I wear right here on our show, of course, in the daytime. 
Next up on the Academy Sports and Outdoors Right Stuff feature, it's all the gear you'll need to do the night fishing that we did on this episode. It begins with the Lose American Hero Rod and Reel Combos. Now you can get the casting combo factory matched for under $100 or the spinning combo, again, perfectly matched cosmetically and balanced just right for under about $70, perfect combos to do this style of fishing. Then you'll need the night light, and as we showed you, of course it's light now so it's not lit up, there's the submersible light alligator clips that you can just clip it onto your 12 volt battery. Next thing you'll need is a whole bunch of Bobby Garland baits, and these are baby sheds and slab slayers, and uh, we've got all different kinds, all different colors in there, but those are perfect baits to catch these white bass and crappie, and you'll need a minnow bucket because I like to tip those with a minnow, and by the way, don't dump your bait. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is asking everyone when you're finished with your unused bait, whether it's minnows or whatever you're fishing with, don't dump it back anywhere in any lake that it didn't come from. So if you bought those minnows like I did, what you need to do is take them back, put them in a Ziploc bag, and dispose of them in the trash can. Don't dump them overboard. It introduces non-native species into places where they don't belong. Now those are some of the components you'll need, and if you play your cards right, you can catch a few of those. I just returned from a six state swing across the southeastern states all the way from Texas to South Carolina, everywhere in between. We had a great time, but one of the interesting things I noticed were a bunch of billboards for attorneys. They were advertising and wanting citizens to hire them to file lawsuits for everything from accidents to illnesses to bad product claims and everything in between. Now, not to say that there are not some legitimate claims out there and some things that do require some litigation, but for the most part, I believe that most of these claims are baseless. They're trying to get you to hire them to help you get rich quick. And you know what? It won't work. This exposes the underbelly of American citizenship. Please don't do business with these sharks and encourage everyone else you know to stay away from them as well. I hope you enjoyed our trip to Lake Whitney in Central Texas. We wound up catching a nice mess of white bass on the show. And don't forget to watch next week's show. We'll be on at 6 p.m. Thursday with a repeat airing Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. And you can always catch the latest episode of our show 24-7 on the front page of our website at Fox Sports Outdoors. Dot com. And something new, right below that, we've got a full video archive. Everything from sneak peek previews, to all of this season's episodes, both Southwest, Southeast versions, last season's episodes, how-to videos, whole bunch of videos. You never have to leave our website. Hey, we'll see you next week. I'm going to go home and get some sleep. It's going to be 103 degrees right here today. I'll be in the air conditioning. Until next week, I'm Barry Stokes. Be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.